Hi, and good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Automate the Pre-Sort Process. This is the latest in our series of educational webinars from Anchor Software. My name is Cindy Prado. I'm the Technical Support Specialist at our Anchor Software office in Plano, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Our webinar today is being presented by Monica Lundquist with Windowbook. In today's webinar, we'll be discussing pre-sort versus post-pre-sort, mail dot editing, and much more that Monica will tell us about shortly. A few notes before I begin. When you're logged into the webinar, you'll automatically play, be placed in mute mode, which simply helps cut down the background noise. Any questions? that you have will be addressed at the end of the webinar. So if you have a question during the presentation, please type your question into the chat area or questions area of the webinar console. And they'll be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. One last note, the webinar is being recorded and it will be made available to you for viewing or reviewing on our website in the coming days. But so before I begin and on the actual webinar and present you to our presenter, Monica, let me tell you a little bit about Anchor Software. Anchor Software was founded in 1998. We have over 1,500 product installs and over 65 products. We provide solutions for data quality, postal compliance, mail processing, and document design. We actively engage in shaping the industry through participation in leadership as such as MTAC, ID Alliance, AMI, POSCOM, and numerous other PCCs. We provide 24-hour technical support. So now that I've told you a little bit about Anchor, let me tell you about our presenter, Monica Lundquist. Monica is currently marketing and training specialist at Windowbook Incorporated, a mailing and, ship, mailing and shipping software company. In this role, she's responsible for developing and maintaining marketing collateral materials, including brochures, white papers, marketing website landing pages, and client-facing communications such as the weekly postal concierge e-tips. Monica previously served in project management, postal affairs, and project management roles at Windowbook Incorporated. Prior to joining Windowbook, Monica was director of list services at RR Donnelly, where she was responsible for the mail list processing operations. Prior to Banter's acquisition by RR Donnelly in 2007, Monica was Director of Mailing and Distribution Services for Banta Publications Group for 11 years. She was responsible for postal affairs for the Publications Group for the Mail List Processing Services of the Publication and Catalog Groups. Monica started her career in the mailing industry in July of 1985 when she joined Brown Printing Company as Mailing List Coordinator. Monica was promoted to Director of Distribution at Services at Brown, where she was responsible for Postal Affairs, the Alliance List Processing Division, and Corporate Transportation Purchasing. Monica left Brown in 1995 to start up her own postal consulting and technical writing firm, where she operated for two years until coming to Banta May of 1997. Monica serves as one of the industry's co-chairs of the Mailers Technical Advisory Committee, MTAC, User Group 11, Mailing Systems and Acceptance. Now, Monica, since I've introduced you, I will turn it over to you. All right. Thank you so much, Cindy. Uh, actually, I should take those dates out of my, uh, <laughs> out of my bio. They really... Uh, 
make me feel old. Uh, anyway, thank you everybody for attending today and uh, thank you Cindy for that nice introduction. So today we are going to talk about the pain points that many mailers experience when they're dealing with manual processes in their mailing operations. And these are things like tedious, repetitive steps that, have, that are undertaken when they're handling their mail.dat files and their postal one submissions. But with the correct tools, these processes can become quick and easy by automating many of these steps. And automating these time wasters saves you money and time while enabling you to redeploy your staff to more high value work. So we're going to start by discussing the differences between pre-sort and post-pre-sort solutions, and then we'll introduce you to the automation tools that Windowbook provides, starting with compliance and validation, and then we'll move on to the mail.dat file editing and processing, logistics optimization, and then to the Postal One transactions. And then we'll wrap it up with that Q&A session that Cindy mentioned. So first, let's talk a little bit about pre-sort software and post-pre-sort software. So for purposes of this webinar, pre-sort software, we're going to collectively say, is the software that's used to prepare the initial plan for a mailing. For purposes of this webinar, we'll include all of the processes, such as the address hygiene and move update functions, duplicate elimination, as well as probably the more commonly known function of sorting the address records into a sequence specified by the Postal Service in order to meet domestic mail manual or DMM requirements and to take advantage of various postage discounts. Now, all of these solutions provided by Anchor Software are probably very familiar to you. Now, one of the key outputs of this process is the mail.dat file set. This is actually a group of individual subfiles which collectively comprise a relational database file. And this relational database file contains all of the details about the mailing except for the actual names and addresses of the mail recipients. So why the need for post pre-sort software? Well, that initial pre-sort plan can and almost always does change. And sometimes those changes occur right up until the point where the mail is being physically prepared. So how do you handle those changes? Well, through editing those mail.dat files, post pre-sort software, such as Windowbook's DAT mail solution, allows users to make changes to that initial plan or mailing without having to go back and rerun the actual postal pre-sort step. Several common examples of changes including, include changing the piece weights, accounting for spoilage, creating partial mailings, and doing analysis for drop shipping to additional entry points. Now there are many more edits and processes that may be needed after the mail.dat file has been generated. These examples are just a few of the ways that DATMAIL post pre-sort software can let a user accommodate changes to that initial pre-sort plan. And then, probably most importantly, produce postal documentation that then matches the actual mailing that's being presented for processing and delivery. There are also other post pre sort solutions for compliance, validation, and other functions that we'll cover in a few minutes. So let's face it, many mailers still have a huge number of manual processing steps in their mailing operations. The same repetitive steps over and over and over, job after job. And these manual steps are extremely time consuming, labor intensive, and they're just downright tedious. The bottom line that is that it's simply not an efficient way to use valuable human assets. As the cost of computing power keeps getting lower and lower, it only makes sense to transfer these tedious repetitive steps to automated systems. This frees up valuable staff time to work on functions that only humans can do, rather than be bogged down with steps that automation can handle. Now, regardless of how powerful your pre-sort software is, people are human and can make mistakes. And things change from the time that the pre-sort is performed to the time that the mailing is ready to be submitted. Windowbook offers a number of solutions that can help validate mail.dat files before the job goes into production and before it's submitted to Postal One. The Your Score service automatically grabs your mailer scorecard data and delivers it to your email inbox each and every day along with a color-coded alert to let you know instantly whether your mailer scorecard is looking good, which would be a green indicator, 
has some warnings or is getting close to error thresholds, which would be a yellow indicator, or if you've exceeded error thresholds, which would be a red indicator. DAT PreCheck allows users to validate mail.dat files as soon as they come out of the pre-sort process. This allows for catching of potential issues, again, before going into production or submission to Postal 1. DAT PreCheck validates the MIDs, CRIDs, nonprofit authorization numbers, labeling list dates, and the service type IDs, or STIDs. DATMEL Prep is another great tool for viewing problem mail.dat files to pinpoint errors, but it also serves as a validator against ID Alliance mail.dat specifications. And it also acts as a preprocessor to make changes to mail.dat files prior to importing into other systems. For example, users often use this utility to split off certain pre-sort levels of a job to send that mail off to a commingling operation. In each case, the solutions offer automation of what would typically be tedious manual tasks. One of the core offerings in the post pre sort world is the ability to edit and process mail.dat files that come out of the pre sort process. At Windowbook, this solution is called DATMail. And the example that you see on your screen here is the advanced navigator view within DATMail. This software allows users to import mail.dat files for editing and further processing. The import can be done one job at a time manually or can be automated to import in a batch mode. The key to making this utility user friendly is the advanced navigator view, which you can see on your screen. This view provides all of the basic job information along the top, kind of in that aqua area. And in the large gray area in the center, all of the frequently edited areas of the mail.dat file are shown with easy access buttons to get to those areas to make the necessary edits. It also includes the most commonly used processes with easy access buttons and easy access to less commonly used areas of the mail.dat files. The goal of this design is to allow even users who are not mail.dat experts to easily identify the data for each mailing job and to easily navigate to the pertinent mail.dat files to make any necessary edits. But even with that user-friendly advanced navigator view, for many mailers, this involves repetitive steps to import and validate the mail.dat files, then perform repetitive edits or repetitive processes, such as palletizing. Many of these manual, tedious, repetitive steps can be automated using Windowbook's Advanced Automation Workflow Manager, which we affectionately know as AWAN. One of the common needs for mailers in processing mail.dat files is to optimize their mailings for drop shipping to multiple entry points. DATMail includes a Planalyzer module which allows users to perform analysis of various dropshipping scenarios to determine the optimal plan. This involves calculating postage at both the origin and destination entries to determine if there are savings by using additional entry points. It includes the ability to apply freight tables so the analysis can take into account all of the transportation costs of getting the mail to those entry points. It also includes transit time and delivery time data so that users can balance postage savings and delivery time impacts when optimizing their mailings. But it doesn't stop there. Windowbook has a number of logistics connectivity tools, including connectivity to multiple logistics carriers, so that the data regarding the finalized dropship plans can be communicated to the carriers. Users have the ability to obtain LTL shipping quotes from Truck Direct Mail right from the DATMEL software, as well as accessing pricing for Priority Mail Open and Distribute, or PMOD, from the Postal Service. The production PMOD labels and paperwork can also be generated directly from DATMEL. And one of our recent additions is called WB Scan. This is a finished mail pallet inventory system. By scanning the intelligent mail barcodes on the pallet placards, users can manage all of their finished mail pallets, 
including identification of physical locations in their mailing operations, right down to efficient loading of these pallets onto trailers. With the multi-carrier trailer manifesting option, trailer manifests and bill of ladings can be generated and data communicated directly to the logistics carrier. Again, all directly from DATMAIL. By providing all of this functionality and connectivity into DATMAIL, this reduces many steps for mailers, reduces the number of systems needed to manage all of this data, and reduces human error, which can be very costly. Now, once users have made all of their mail.dat file edits and completed any necessary processing, such as entry point optimization, it's time to submit the job to Postal One. Now, we've been told by many of our clients that it can be very frustrating and labor intensive to monitor jobs on Postal One. It can be time consuming and labor intensive to track your EDOC submissions. And you need to constantly log in to the dashboard to monitor your job submissions. And it can be difficult to understand some of the sometimes cryptic feedback or error messages from Postal One. And if you get error messages, it's difficult to understand what needs to be fixed and which files need to be fixed in order to be able to correct those errors. So here at WindowBook, we developed a solution called Postal Web, which includes the desktop dashboard user interface and is powered by Postal Web Connector. You can use this solution to automate all of your Postal One transactions from eDoc submission to document retrieval. Postal Web works with mail.dat files that are generated by any pre-sort software, even MLOCR software. And it also works with any post pre-sort program, even if you don't use DATMAIL. And even if you don't use any post pre-sort software, you can still take advantage of these automation tools. Postal Web is designed to help you save time managing your submissions to Postal One, quickly fixing Postal One validation errors, and retrieving your Postal One documents. So how does all of this work? Well, one of the mailer challenges in working with Postal One is that the Postal Service's MDR client software can sometimes become a bottleneck. After successfully implementing EDOC, customers sometimes discover that there are long wait times for MDR client processing. Jobs are processed one at a time, so they spend time waiting for jobs to complete before they can move on to the next job. Postal Web's connector allows you to automate your Postal One upload and notifies you of the status with an email or text message. So it allows you to work on an exception basis rather than waiting on individual jobs. Now, while this is always helpful, it can be particularly beneficial after there has been a Postal One outage. Instead of waiting and wondering which files made it, which ones didn't, and which ones need to be resubmitted and so forth, this solution can take care of that monitoring for you and submit the files in the correct sequence to Postal One once the service has been restored. The solution simply offers mailers a much better way to work with Postal One. It provides for a very user-friendly user interface, and it allows even users with very limited knowledge of mail.dat files to easily locate their jobs, to see quickly when there are errors, and more importantly, get them easily and quickly to the specific areas in the file that need to be edited and corrected so they can easily make the necessary edits and resubmit the files. This is so much easier than the old manual method of trying to decipher sometimes confusing Postal Service client and debug log files. And it also eliminates trying to translate sometimes obscure Postal One error messages. It eliminates the labor intensive work involved with using the Postal Service's MDR client software. No more sitting, waiting, and looking at job listings on the MDR client to see if your submissions were successfully processed. It drops your files into a staging queue so that you don't have to wait and watch for those files. This can be a huge benefit as users can move on to other tasks and let Postal Web Connector automatically stage, upload, and monitor the progress of your jobs. And we know that most people don't just sit in front of their computers all day long staring at the Postal One dashboard or your other software applications. We know that you're often in meetings or on conference calls or out on the mail shop floor. 
Well, Postal Web follows users wherever they might go and let them know of issues that may have been encountered with their Postal One submissions and may need some attention. This is done by giving you the option to receive email and text message notification of Postal One events that may require some attention, such as if there's a client validation failure or a server validation failure, the job isn't accepted, and so forth. You can also get notified for successful events, such as when your statements are finalized. So these notifications allow much more flexibility for users in their daily activities without missing any critical deadlines due to Postal One submission issues. And if you're impressed with what the solution can do so far, well, there's more because we're now going to talk to you about Quick Fix. Postal Web's desktop dashboard has an integrated Quick Fix function, which is a mini mail.bat editor. This allows you to fix validation errors right from the Postal One desktop dashboard and resubmit files to Postal One quickly and hassle free. So you can use Quick Fix to look at validation logs to fix your validation errors more easily. It shows exactly which files within the mail.dat file need to be fixed and lists the fields that need editing. The solution also provides easy access to your Postal One documents. Right from this user interface, you can view your finalized and unpaid statements, your 3607 mailing receipts, and the barcoded confirmation pages. And you can print them, email them, save them as PDFs. You can even set it so that these documents are automatically printed at a time that you specify. The engine behind all of this is called the Postal Web Connector. It allows for user-friendly configuration to the batch uploading process of Postal One's prod, pre-prod, cat, and tem areas. The desktop dashboard that I just mentioned adds more flexibility, functionality, and user-friendly status and messaging information. Now, there's another part of Postal Web that involves the document retrieval. Not only does this solution facilitate uploading your eDoc, but Postal Web also facilitates getting your documents back from Postal One. Postal Web is designed to help mailers reduce the time that they spend interacting with Postal One and to automatically deliver their documents and data that's needed by mailers and mail owners. So it solves what is in many mailing operations a big problem. Their employees are spending too much time retrieving documents from Postal One and providing them to clients or to internal departments or entering that postage data into a variety of other programs. You can have your finalized postage statements or PDFs emailed to you, or you can have them securely transferred to your network. We can even put these PDFs in a separate folder for each mail owner, for each CSR, and so forth. Postal Web also allows you to receive XML files with the underlying postage data for each statement. This data is far easier to work with and is much more complete than any data that you can download from Postal One. Again, you can get automated delivery of the UPD, unpaid, or finalized postage statements, the barcoded confirmation pages, and the 3607 mailing receipts. And again, you can get those either by email or secure network transfer. And this is just a visual of the different statement options. That's the other flexibility that Postal Web provides you. Users can select which format they want to receive. You can receive the official version, which is the Postal Service, uh, which is the format of the Postal Service forms that are found online and as is specified in the DMM. Or you can get uh, what is represented in the middle here, which is the Postal One dashboard version in an HTML format. Or there is the 3607 mailing receipt. Or you can get all of them if you wish. So regardless of which format you need for proof of mailing, you can get it easily on Postal Web. So to wrap things up for today, there are many, many steps that take place with your mailing jobs in the post pre-sort process. For some mailers who may have very clean mail.dat files that need little editing or processing, perhaps only the Postal One interaction tools are needed. 
For other mailers who may have mail.dat files coming from multiple sources and in varying conditions, and that need to do a lot of editing and processing, perhaps the full suite of automation solutions is in order. We have some clients who have implemented the full suite who enjoy a virtual lights out operation where the mail.dat files rarely need human intervention at all due to the automation of all of these steps. Most mailers fall somewhere in the middle. And for these folks, we work with them to understand their unique mailing workflows and suggest the tools that will automate their specific processes. We also suggest that mailers start out with one or two of the automation tools to get started and then add additional tools over time. Now, the best way to accomplish this is for us to spend some time with you to understand your workflow. We call this a mailing optimization analysis. This is a free 60-minute session with one of our software experts where we review your workflow and your mail.dat files to determine which of our solutions will best fit your operation. To take advantage of this, please go to our website at windowbook.com forward slash MOA for mailing optimization analysis. Or you can call us on our toll-free line, which is 800-524-0380 and request your mailing optimization analysis. Or you can make that same request via email to sales at windowbook.com. So at this point, we will open up the floor for questions on the material that we've presented today, and I'll turn it back over to you, Cindy. Thank you, Monica. I appreciate all the helpful information, and I'm sure that a lot of us um, are much, much more informed about all of the various things that Windowbooks can help us with. So it looks like we do have some great questions that have come through. So let me go ahead and start with, it looks like somebody typed in our chat window. Oh, here's a great one. On the automation for mail debt edit file, mail debt file editing and processing, how does that work if I have different processes for different types of jobs? Monica, I'll let you answer that one. Okay, thanks, Cindy. Uh, that is a great question, and that's very typical uh, that uh, a mailer or mail service provider will have different processes. And the best way to handle that is through our uh, Advanced Automation Workflow Manager, or AWAM. Within AWAM, you can set up what are called different profiles. Uh, and those different profiles would identify different types of scenarios and you put into those profiles the different steps that you want to uh, take place. So for example, you might set up a different profile for your first class mail jobs uh, versus your postal service uh, marketing mail jobs, or you might set up different profiles for different clients, or you might set up different profiles for uh, different um, providers of your mail.dat files. And in each case, uh, we will help you set up those different profiles to manage those different processes. Great. Thank you, Monica. Uh, oh, here's another good one. How does the postal web uploading of mail.files differ from the use of batch mode and of uploading on Postal 1? Okay, thanks. Another great question. Um, actually, Postal Web does use uh, the, back, the batch mode within Postal 1, but it, it also enhances it. So there's several enhancements that we do to that process. One is that we um, stage and queue the jobs. I think I mentioned that earlier. So what we do in that regard, we won't let, um, for example, if you've got some small jobs that you're uploading and a really large one, we don't let that large one bottleneck the process and block the rest of the smaller jobs from uploading. So we stage and queue them in the right sequence. Uh, likewise, uh, we also prevent situations from happening. So, for example, if you submit an original release file and then you have an update to that file, we make sure that that original release gets through first before we submit the update file. 
The other thing that we do is optimize resources. So in other words, um, it's kind of like a bandwidth type of things. So we optimize that uh, to make sure that the resources are being fully utilized when you have a lot of files going up or large files going up as opposed to uh, when you have very few files or small files. So we basically take the Pulse to One batch mode and enhance it. Great. Okay. Um, next question. Here we go. Here's another great one, Monica. We preserve most of our jobs and create MailDAT files, but for a few jobs, we receive outside supplied MailDAT files. How do we automate those solutions uh, work for the, let me repeat, how, let me see, how do those automation solutions work for both of these uh, solutions, situations rather? Okay, um, thanks Cindy. Uh, I think this is probably similar to the first question in that, you know, you, we can customize um, how the automation works um, in that mail. So, for example, if you've got your own mail.dat files that you know are good and clean and don't need a lot of processing, you know, we can set up one profile for those as opposed to files that might be coming in from other resources that may not be in as good a shape and may need additional work um, before you can submit those to Postal One. And again, there's a variety of ways to do that. The most efficient is to use the AWAM system that we talked about earlier uh, and create different profiles for those. Great, great. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see if another one comes through. Oh, here's another great one. Well, good questions today. Why would we need to validate MailDAP files that are coming out of our own pre-sort process? Yeah, that's a good question because, you know, most people just assume, hey, we set these up ourselves and ran it through our own pre-sort process and they've got to be good, right? And, you know, most of the time they probably are, but there may be situations where, you know, let's face it, people are human and we can make uh, mistakes. And so it's good to catch some of those things before you go into production. So, for example, you know, if you ran your job and and you just fat fingered something and put in a wrong STID, for example, service type ID, that can be very expensive if you use, use the wrong service type ID in your mailing. So you might wanna validate for something like that. Um, uh, or, you know, if, is your labeling list information up to date? Um, that changes every month. Uh, so if you don't have that up to date, that can ca cause some routing problems for your mail. So. Basically, the validation processes, regardless of, of where you do them, and we offer in those in a lot of different uh, solutions, they only take a few seconds to run. So it's better to run that validation process and just do that double check and make sure that nothing's wrong. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time and it give you a little peace of mind that that at least what you what you basically put in during your pre-sort process is what you expected and you're not likely going to have uh, errors as you submit your job. Thank you, Monica. Thank you very much. That was great. Uh, okay, let's see. Time for one more question. Yep, that looks like all. Well, again, I want to thank everybody for joining today's webinar and thank you especially to our presenter, Monica Lundquist, excuse me, Lundquist with Window Book. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to either email us here at Technical Support or the informative links that Monica gave us earlier. And as we said earlier on in on the webinar, we will be uh, presenting this webinar for you to review in the next coming days. Thank you, everybody, and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks, everybody.